Welcome back to Scale Model Crazy. I received a lot of questions as to how I do my detailing on my dashes for my 124th and 125th scale models. Um, I looked online and I couldn't find a whole lot of videos uh, on how to do it, so I thought I would create my own and show you guys how I do it. Again, there's probably a thousand different ways to do this. Everybody has their own way. I'm not saying mine's the right way. It's just the way that I do it. So if you want to uh, follow along and do it my way, then have at it. If not, you can Google search and see what else you can find out there. And maybe there's other ways that, uh, that would suit you better. Um, so it all started from this dash here. So this dash is for my... Uh, 1959 Chevy Impala and here's a better picture of it so you can see what it actually looks like uh, where I'm not holding it uh, up to the camera um, I've also done other dashes like my 55 uh, Chevy uh, Bel Air which is this one here um, and I've also uh, did a highly detailed dash for Project Salt Flats which is this one here um, and a few of my other models have them as well. Now, I can't give you one particular way how to do it because it all depends on what the dash quality is like because some of the dashes are really nicely detailed. So this one here that I took out of one of my kits, uh, this one's off of a 54 Chevy sedan and you can see it's okay for detail. It's not the best. I've seen better. I've seen a lot worse and then this one here Which happens to be out of a 57 Chevy hardtop kit So again the instruments are in there, but they're really Recessed so you can see that there's a lot of deep pockets within that dash that you're gonna have to uh, that you're gonna have to address um, the other one, and some of them are really poorly done, so I'll show you uh, one out of a Trans Am that I have right up there, so I'll grab it. So, here it is here, and you can see that this is very, very poorly detailed. And that's why I'm saying there's no real one way to do this. Uh, some of them you're going to have to actually get rid of the, the, uh, the instrument cluster completely. Uh, some of them you're going to be able to work with the instrument cluster. Uh, like, the, uh, like the one from the 57 Chevy. Uh, because it has good detail within the gauges and the numbers and all of that kind of stuff. And you can paint that out and, and make it look good. Um, the ones that I showed you, so the one from my Impala and uh, Project Salt Flats and the, uh, the other one there that I showed you are all painted. There's nothing that's been added. There's no photo etched gauges uh, or photo etched trim rings or anything like that. Um, and the stuff that I use is markers. So it's good to have a good uh, variety of markers. Uh, permanent markers, these are Sharpies. One's a silver, one's a red, one's a black. Um, I also use finer markers, such as these ones here. So you can see you've got green, red, black, and blue. Um, when you're getting right into the dashes, these are really fine tip permanent markers. And uh, they're great to have for when you're doing the detail work inside. Um, you're going to need whatever glue is your, is your go-to glue. Um, and you're going to need some toothpicks for getting in there and doing some detail work. And you're going to need five minute epoxy. So basically when it comes to doing dashes, it's a lot of patience. You can't rush this. You've got to lay down the color of your gauges first. So if you're not cutting them out or drilling them out, which we're going to do with this one here, but if I was doing this one here, I would lay down the color of my gauges first. If they're going to be white, then I would spray my gauges all white. Okay. Then I would tape my gauges up and paint my dash. So that way there, you're not trying to paint the inside of your gauges. You don't have to worry about getting overspray on the outside with your airbrush. And you can tape these up easily 
and then paint your dash color um, so that it matches the car you're building or whatever you're going to end up doing. After you're done doing that, then you can remove the tape from your gauges and you can start doing detailing on your gauges. <coughs> so I've used things from pencils to go in and actually highlight the uh, gauges with, a, with, the, uh, with the lead. And you can actually see where it does bring them out. I don't know if that's showing on the camera or not, but that'll bring them out. The thing is when you do this, you've got to make sure that you go back in with your uh, clear coat or whatever you're going to do to seal this stuff. Uh, of course, you always have the option to go buy photo etch gauges um, or decals. If I have to do that type of process, which I'm going to do with this one here from that Trans Am kit that is so horrible, uh, is I actually have this. I don't know if you can see this. So there you're zoomed in on an old gauge cluster out of an older car. There's uh, all kinds of gauges. That's, a, that's out of like a Lincoln or something like that. And then you've got all kinds of gauges here all the way down the page, different sizes, different shapes, different colors. And what you would do is you would use my sheet, cut out whichever, whichever uh, gauge uh, instrument cluster you want to use. And that is what we are going to install in the back of this once we drill those holes out. So to drill the holes out is real simple. All I use is my micro drill bit set. I will pre-drill it first with the smallest drill bit that I have right dead in the center. And then I will come back with whatever drill bit fits the exact size of the gauge cluster. So I will do that and then I will be back in five seconds through the magic of video and show you what it looks like. Back in a second. And I'm back with the drilled out things due to the magic of video, like I said. So there you go, that's the drilled out instrument cluster. So where they used to be. So now is when you're going to want to start doing the detailing on the dash. So if I want to do the, if I want to do the, uh, radio buttons or any of the knobs or if I want to do the detailing on the Trans Am emblem or whatever the case may be this is when I will do that so I'll just bring you down to where I'm working so with the silver where am I at here silver marker permanent marker I will go in and I will mark make buttons and when you're using a marker one of the keys is that you lightly lightly touch it because if you touch it too hard the ink is just going to keep coming out of it and you won't be able to do anything about it like I say this dash really does not have a whole lot of detail to it so I'm gonna see what I can do here, where the keys go, really nothing down inside there that I can do. Anyway, so that's what it looks like. And you get the idea, right? You just go in there and touch it up with your silver marker. And if you don't own a pair of these Space Age high tech, make you good looking glasses, you better get yourself a set. Uh, unless, of course, you're young and you still have good eyes, but I don't, so these work really well. They help you see what you're doing. There's multiple levels, so if I click this up, that's one 
level of magnification. If I put this down, that's another level of magnification. If I bring this around, that's super magnification. That is like really getting into the detail stuff. So, enough about that. Now that I have my dash uh, painted and detailed and I put a coat of, a coat of clear over it to protect the paint, uh, after I've uh, after I've airbrushed it, um, then I will go ahead and start adding my gauges. So because I drilled the holes out of the back of it, I'm going to have to put something in it. So I just made this out of styrene, right? So there's a notch on the back where the steering wheel goes through. So I had to cut that out, and this is going to go. Oop, this is going to go in behind there like that. And it's going to give me the backing for my dash, and it's also going to allow me to recess my gauges, which is going to look a lot more realistic than having them uh, actually sticking out off the face of the uh, face of the dash. So now I just apply my decals and uh, glue this onto the back of it, and we are done. So again, through the magic of video, I shall be back in two seconds, and we will continue on with the process of detailing your dash. Be right back. And I'm back. Man, I'm fast. So there's what the gauges look like once they are installed. So now what I'm going to do is a little bit of a wash on the radio just so that I can make that pop a bit more. So what I will use is just a latex paint and I'll take one of my trusty caps that I do all my mixing in. Always keep your caps off your water bottles. You can never have enough of them. A little bit of white in there. Take a very fine brush. Get it wet. Okay. And then I'm going to come into the wet. White, and I'm going to water it down really good. So I'm going to keep dipping my paintbrush in the water and get this water down to a nice consistency that I like where I know it's going to flow because that's what you want it to do. You're going to want it to flow as soon as you touch whatever you're going to touch. So there I've got it a milky consistency. It's almost the same consistency as airbrush paint, uh, which is almost like the consistency of milk. So, toothpick, get that paint on the toothpick, and then go in, put the goggles back on again, go in and just touch the inside of that radio dial, and let that paint flow. And what this will do is it'll flow in the seams or in the little joints for you that you're never going to be able to paint with a paintbrush and it'll make it nice and square for you. Like I say, just take your time, have patience, you're not in a rush. And that'll allow you to kind of square off that white just to give it some more detail on the radio. This dash has horrible details, so it is what it is. I'm just trying to show you guys uh, a rough overview of what I do when I'm doing it. So uh, another technique you can use. So if I pan you down, I'll bring you in some. So another technique that I'll use is actually dry brushing. So if I wanted to do that, eagle. There's an eagle right here. If I want to do that eagle, I will take some of the paint. Let's say we're going to do it white. And then what you're going to do is get that paint off. These are just cards that come in the mail for if you if you want to get credit with us, give us a call. You're already approved. Yeah, yeah, yeah stuff. 
I keep them all and I use them for this stuff. So get that brush nice and dry. And then when you have it nice and dry, you're going to come in and you're going to dry brush over that. I use my fingers a lot too, but I also draw, so I'm used to uh, I'm used to using my fingers for doing my shadowing and whatnot. All I'm doing with my fingers is just tapping off the the thicker stuff so that I can try to get the detail of the of the bird. Right, so something like that. And then you have the bird that's there and it'll show up. Once you put a little clear coat on it and but the important thing is to make sure that your brush is dry, dry, dry. You just want to dry brush it on there. Okay, so now that that is done, let's go put our uh, let's go put our lenses in. So to put the lenses in, we're going to use our five minute epoxy. Let me back you up a bit so that I can always find you when I'm looking for you. So you're going to use our five minute epoxy. Five minute epoxy is real simple. If you buy it just like this. The cap is usually there, or the the plug itself is usually stuck between this, and you snap it off. And then when you insert it the other way, it punctures a hole through it. And then it also becomes a cap when you turn it over. So when you take this, you can mix this on pretty much anything you want that you're going to throw away. So we will put it on here. And you're going to squeeze out two equal parts. It's really important when you're squeezing this, don't squeeze on one side or the other. You want to squeeze in the middle so you're getting equal parts of both of the products. Okay, so I'm going to squeeze a little out here. Come on, baby. There we go, equal parts. Make sure you put the cap back on. You don't want this stuff drying out. This stuff's not that expensive. It's only probably... I don't know, six bucks or something like that. You can also get one minute epoxy. This stuff usually hardens before you even get it stirred. So I caution you on buying this stuff. Uh, <clears throat> take a toothpick, get this all mixed in good. So stir it all in. Stir it all up, stir it all up, stir it all up. You want to make sure that you're doing this on something that doesn't have any paint or anything on it because this will take the consistency of the paint and it will not be see-through. So once you get this all stirred up, it's real simple. You take your toothbrush, put it in, give it a twirl, take out your dollop, put it in the center of your gauges and let it run down and get on it. And then once it's on it, you can just kind of pick the toothbrush up and down and move the epoxy around a little bit. You want it to touch all the sides of that gauge. There's one. Put it in. Give it a twirl. Pick it out. Put it in with the gauge. Hold it until it starts touching the gauge. And once it starts touching the gauge, then you can start moving it around. Making sure that it touches all the sides. But you want to be careful. You want to make sure that you don't drop this epoxy actually on the face of the face of the uh, dash. <coughs> Excuse me. I could use a little bit more. This stuff is 100% self-leveling. So you don't have to worry about it being leveled out. 
Make sure, see the way it's, see the way I'm leaving that string when I pick it up? Don't pick it up and drag it over because you'll put that string of epoxy right across your dash. And this stuff is a bugger to get off. See the way I let it hang until it drops right off? And then that's it. I'm gonna put a little bit more in this front one. middle one and a little bit more in this one. and remember you only have five minutes once this stuff starts hardening up you cannot touch it <clears throat> okay. There, so I'm happy with that. Those pockets are all full. It's touching the ring all the way around all sides. Because I don't see any flat spots in there. Except for maybe. Okay, so now you've got to set this aside and you've got to set it aside how you want that to dry. So make sure that if it's a dash that the glass does, does this on, right, rolls, then you're going to want to make sure that you, you hold this like that for the five minutes so that the glass will do this run and it'll look like the actual glass that came in the vehicle. So I'm going to position this. I always use one of these. That way there I can turn it. Get it however I want it. Grab a hold of my dash, and I want my dash a little bit flatter. There. So now I'm going to let that go for five minutes, and I'm going to be back, and I'll show you guys what it looks like a little bit closer up. Be back in five seconds. And I'm back. So the detail wasn't coming through. I just took it over to the paint booth. I put a quick uh, coat of white paint on it so that I could show you guys a little bit more detail. I'll paint over all this anyway when I actually build this model. I'm just showing you guys for uh, for the sake of uh, demonstration purposes. You can actually see where the white paint's still wet and I'm scraping it off. Um, so <clears throat> this is what you'll end up with if you take your time. This was done really quickly. So I'd say that this took me in total about maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes. So you guys can do this. It's real simple to do, okay? It's not uh, rocket science. There's not a whole lot of, uh, there's not a whole lot of skill or technique involved. It's just a matter of taking your time and uh, not rushing through this because if you do, if you don't let that epoxy set up, then you're not going to be able to uh, get the finished product because once you touch this stuff when it's semi-hard, it will stay in that shape and it will not dry clear. So here's a picture of what it looks like and you can see how clear those lenses are. You can't touch this epoxy until it is set up nice and hard. Um, it does set up. It's five minute epoxy. It'll set up in five minutes. So take those five minutes and, and find something else to do on the kit. Uh, as far as everything else on there, that's just simply done with, uh, with the markers and some airbrushing, um, some pencils, some, uh, some uh, decals. If you, if you have decals, like the decal sheet that I create here with all the gauges and stuff on it. Um, there's a million ways that you can do these dashes. Uh, but if you don't take your time, they're never ever going to turn out um, and you're going to get frustrated and you're never going to, uh, to enjoy doing this as a hobby. So just take your time, do what you want to do. Again, you've heard me say it before. You can go look at reference pictures if you want and you can use those reference pictures as a reference. But it doesn't mean that your model has to be exactly the same as that picture because your model, like any other custom car that's out there on the road, can have anything that you want on it. So 
again, don't listen to the uh, key keyboard uh, commandos telling you that uh, that's not the right color, you didn't do this right. It doesn't matter. Have fun, build what you want to build, and I will see you guys next time with another tutorial. If you have any questions or video ideas, by all means, please let me know because I'm always looking for ideas for good videos. I think this was a good one, and the next one that I'm going to do is going to be an update on the 59 Impala, which should be coming out anytime soon. Thanks, guys. See you next time. Have fun.